All right, so let's talk about the Modeling Toolkit's bridge. And we will find that in the Modeling Toolkit icon right here on the top right hand side of our UI. And the bridge is found towards the bottom right here. Now, what is bridging? Well, let me hide the grid real quick. Let me go over here. I have two polygon planes right here. One is made out of three faces by three faces. And this means that I have nine faces right here. The other one is made out of two faces by two faces. So we have four. Now, in order to bridge something, we're going to have to combine this into a single piece. And next, we are going to bridge our edges from one piece to the next one. Remember, by combining them, they will become one piece. So we can bridge. If they are not combined, bridge will not work. As you can see, if I select both of them and I go to my edges, and I select my edges and I try to bridge, nothing is going to happen. I'm going to get an error. Does not work with multiple objects like this. So what we have to do is we have to combine these two pieces together. Combine is found inside of the modeling toolkit at the very top of our meshes icons, or we can go in the modeling menu set. We go to mesh, combine. So let's select both of the pieces. Let's go to combine. And I want you to notice that when you combine these two objects right here, you're going to create these two empty nodes, which are the history of the combination. So what I like to do as soon as I create a combination, I like to delete my history. When you do that, the history that this piece had and the history that this piece had disappear. Now, if we were to combine these edges by going to right mouse button edge and with the selection tool, and holding the shift key, I'm going to click and drag this edge, this edge, and this edge. And I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Notice that we're going to go from three edges, one, two, and three, to two. So when we click on bridge, we're also going to get another problem. So you have to bridge from one side to the other one with the same amount of edges. Now, if I select this edge right here, shift select this edge, and then I select this edge right here, and shift select this edge, I'm going to get a bridge. I went from 1, 2 to 1, 2. Now let's look at the next example. Now here we have two cubes, as you can see. One is made out of six planes, and each plane has four polygons. So if I was to select this cube right here, and I went to its history by going to my channels, polycube, you will notice that on the subdivision width, subdivision height, subdivision depth, I have two. If I select this and I type in one, I'm going to get a plain and simple cube. But if I select my subdivisions and I type in two, I've split each one of these planes in half. Now this cube right here does not have any subdivisions. So how can we use the bridge tool to bridge this object to this object? Well, again, first select the two objects. I'm going to delete the history and I'm going to go to the My Modeling Toolkit and I'm going to combine them. Immediately delete the history again. And there you have it. Now they're one single object. I'm going to go to right mouse button, select my faces, and I'm going to select while holding the shift key, these four faces right here. And then while holding the shift key, select this face. I'm going to hit delete. And now I have two cubes with two open holes right here where these two planes were. Now we are going to run into the same problem again. If I select these edges, and in this case, I'm going to go to edges and to select this edge loop, all you have to do is double click on that edge and it will go around. And I hold shift and do this. Notice that when I try to bridge, it's going to give me the same error. It cannot go from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to one, two, three, and four. So what we have to do with these faces right here, we have to cut them in half. I'm going to use my multi-cut tool. So select this object, select the multi-cut tool, and I'm going to start cutting these faces in the middle. And remember, we have a video on using the multi-cut tool. We are going to hold shift. And when we do so, notice that we get this little black dot right here. This will tell us that this is the halfway point. If I click in here, notice that it says 50%. So this right here is my 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and on and on up to 100. So I'm going to go from this 50% right here. I'm going to hold my shift key and go to this edge and click on it. I'm going to go right here to this edge, hold shift, click here, 
hold shift, click here, and I'm going to hit Y. And Y is a shortcut for select the last tool used, which is this icon right here. So let's do the sides. I'm going to hold shift, click on this side right here. I'm holding shift. I have not let go of shift. And I'm going to click on this edge right here. And now I'm going to hit Q for the selection tool. Now, notice that here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight faces, which will give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight edges. And again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight faces with eight edges. Now we can select these edges right here by doing a double click. And I'm going to do the same double click from in this corner, but on the opposite side, hold shift, double click. And now when I generate a bridge operation, there you have it. We have created a bridge from an open hole to the next one. Now, every time you create a bridge, you're going to get this little UI right here. This UI will allow you to create additional divisions. So all you have to do is click on the word division and slide it. And notice that now we have two divisions and you can go all the way to whatever you want. Let me bring this down again to a manageable number. We're going to skip taper because this model, it's hard to demonstrate what taper can do. Now we're going to talk about twist. If I click on the word twist and with my left mouse button, I drag this, notice that it's going to twist our bridge. On the curve type, notice that we have linear, blend, and curve. We are going to do another demo following this one where I will demonstrate what these guys do right here. I'm going to hit Q. I'm also going to show you how to modify this once you get out of the bridge tool. All you have to do is go to your channels and there you have it. Poly bridge. I can type in zero for my twist. For divisions, I can click select divisions and with my middle mouse button, I can add more or less. Perfect. So let's continue with the last example where we're going to bridge multiple objects. Now in this example, we have three objects right here. I have a sphere, a cylinder and a cube. I have not deleted their history because I want to show you how to alter the amount of edges that we have. If I select my cylinder and I go to in my history under channels inputs, you will see polysphere. Every time you create a polysphere, you will get this input right here. This was my very first operation. Now under subdivision axis, I typed in 16. I want 16 edges going in this direction right here so that it matches 16 edges on the cylinder right here so that it matches my 16 edges on my cube. And I'll show you how to do this. As soon as you create a sphere, under polysphere, you're gonna type in subdivisions on your axis 16. Now I typed in 16 before for my subdivisions on the height, but I noticed that my polygons were more rectangular. And remember, we don't want rectangular polygons. Always aim for perfect squares if you can. So I'm gonna change this to 10, much better. So for the cylinder, very first thing that we have in our history is poly cylinder one. And for the subdivision on my axis, I typed in 16. If I want more subdivisions on my height, I would go to my subdivisions on the height, select it with your left mouse button, hold the middle mouse button and then drag it left and right. So I'm creating support edges. Then for the cube, it's interesting. If I go to poly cube, I have a subdivision width, subdivision height, subdivision depth, and I'm going to type in four. Why is that? Because if I typed in 16, you will notice that this is 16 by 16 by 16 by 16. So in order to have 16 all the way around, we need to type in four. And now notice that I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that's eight, one, two, three, four, that's 12, one, two, three, four, 16. Excellent. So let's combine these three. I'm gonna select all of them and I'm gonna go and delete my history, freeze my transformation and center the pivot. These are shortcuts. I do this on every single major operation, a combine, a bridge, and so on and so on. I have these guys here, so I can just do click, click, click. Excellent. So time to combine these guys. I'm gonna go to my modeling toolkit. 
I'm going to go to combine. So now they're one piece. But remember, we have history left behind the history of our sphere of our cube of our cylinder, select everything, delete history, and notice that those nodes will disappear. And there you have it. So let's close this right here. Now they're combined. However, we cannot bridge, we don't have open holes. So I'm going to select all these faces right here by going right mouse button faces and I'm going to do a click and drag all the way to the bottom of the cylinder. So I've selected the top and the bottom which I want to delete and now I'm going to deselect the middle parts by holding control. Notice that the icon now has a negative sign. So it will subtract these faces and I always double check, check the top, check the bottom. Those three were not selected so hold the shift key and add those three faces go around make sure that nothing else got selected and hit delete let's do the same thing for our sphere i'm going to delete these faces right here that was easier and for the cube we're going to delete only the top we're going to leave the bottom the way it is so i'm going to move my camera i'm going to click and drag so i can select all these faces and then I'm going to hold control and do a drag and the faces on the edges will be unselected. Hit delete and now we're ready to bridge. Notice that this edge right here could be our center line. Mimics this edge right here, which mimics this edge right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click to the right of that center. Double click. I'm going to hold the shift key. And I'm going to do the same thing here, shift, double click. So now I'm going to bridge from here to here. And then double click this edge loop, shift, double click this other edge loop and do another bridge. So as you can see, I have two bridge operations. If I go to my channels, hit Q, I have this bridge operation here and the second bridge operation here. If you happen to run into this problem where the bridge does not go from this one edge right here to this one right here, play around with the bridge offset. I'm going to offset it by one. So I'm going to click and drag to the right and there it is. It fixed this issue right here. Offset is going to offset the bridge by the amount that you select in here. Notice how the offset works when I move this slider from left to right. Now, once this is done, we can add more subdivisions like so. But again, careful with the bridging, correct it with the offset like so. And there you have it. So now notice that our curve type is linear. If I go, for example, to a front view of this connection, notice that my line is not straight anymore. It's going to try to blend following this line right here and then this line right here. So the higher the subdivision, the nicer you will see this curvature. If I switch, for example, to curve, now what curve is doing, it is also trying to blend this using a curvature. So you're going to have three types of curve types from linear to blend to curve. And it'll be more dramatic based on the actual geometry that you're using. So I'm going to bring my subdivisions down to something manageable. And again, this is how we use the bridge tool to connect different pieces that have been combined into one single piece and closing the holes as long as they have same amount of edges around the border edge. <laughs>